It is the 16th and final home game on the Grapefruit League schedule as the Pirates get ready to play baseball. And spring training baseball is brought to you by McDonald's. The Bucks are hosting the Boston Red Sox on a spectacular day here in Bradenton, Florida. The Pirates will play one more exhibition game down in this state, and that is tomorrow at Port Charlotte. Greg Brown and John Wayner with you. And, uh, John, we're anxious for opening day to get here Sunday at PNC Park against the Cardinals. We're also anxious to see those uh, three in the outfield the Pirates have, and they've been bumped and bruised a little bit recently, but they're back today. Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon, and Gregory Polanco. It's nice to see them all back in the lineup. Obviously, they're going to be a huge part of the success of the offense this year. Marte's had a pretty good uh, spring training. Uh, he missed a couple of days, a little banged up. McCutcheon, just a day, he, he had a day off. He was a late scratch. He's been hitting the long ball, and Polanco hasn't played in a handful of days. So definitely nice to see these three back in the lineup and get them ready for opening day on Sunday. John Neese will get his final tune-up today. And yeah, the regular season begins on Sunday. So this is our uh, final game in Bradenton, Florida. We say bye-bye, Bradenton, for Another year as the Bucks get ready to take on the Boston Red Sox. Hey, there's Snooty the Manatee. John wrote a song about it. Snooty the Manatee weighs 2,000 pounds. Come see his funny friends. They will make their rows. <laughs> Come on, sing. <laughs> TPG has extended. Getting ready. It's a final Keckley Field tune up. And as we said, the Pirates are traveling south to Port Charlotte tomorrow. They'll fly out of Fort Myers, head to Indianapolis, have an off day Friday, play an exhibition game against the Reds at Victory Field in Indianapolis, and then open things up for real on Sunday. John Neese, 29 year old. This is fourth official Grapefruit League start. Last time out six days ago, went six innings against the Orioles. So he uh, will have this one final preseason tune-up, and then he'll be ready whenever it is decided that he'll make his first start. And we'll check out the Boston Red Sox lineup. This is a split squad. 
John Farrell, the manager, is here. He has Mookie Betts leading off, hitting 321 this spring with four homers. Josh Rutledge plays second base, then the veteran Chris Young and left Pablo Sandoval in a battle for the starting third base position with Travis Shaw. He will start at third base. Ryan Hannigan behind the plate. Blake Swihart will DH. Lucene Castillo is in center. Sam Travis, the first baseman. Mauricio Dubon is the shortstop. And the UPMC numbers for Jonathan Neese. Nine and ten in the record a year ago. 413 the ERA. Not a lot of strikeouts. 113 and 176 in two-thirds innings. League hit 280 against him. Jonathan, uh, Last tune-up of the spring for Nice. Defense has been strong this spring. We uh, repeat often that uh, the numbers aren't necessarily important in spring training. Gregory Polanco is in right. Andrew McCutcheon in center. Starling Marte in left. Pedro Floymon, Sean Rodriguez on the left side of the infield. Josh Harrison, Jason Rogers on the right side. Chris Stewart behind the plate. But some things you uh, circle in terms of positive trends, the fact that the Pirates have committed only 14 errors. Only the Houston Astros in baseball uh, have committed fewer this spring, and that's not just Florida. That includes Arizona. Mookie Betts hitting 290, hit 291 last year, as we showed you hitting 321 this spring. And underway, Roberto Marino the home plate umpire. Yeah, he was just back there on Monday, yeah. I believe. A rookie going to get a chance to uh, call the balls and strikes for a second time, and Mookie Betts will wind up at second base right away on a 1 0 pitch. You know, for Jonathan Neese, he doesn't necessarily have the, the, the fastball or the stuff to blow it by in. So, uh, especially if he gets behind in the count, you can't afford to go over the heart of the plate. That pretty much was middle, middle. Middle of the plate, about thigh high. And Betts made him pay. Strike on Rutledge. Rutledge played in 39 games with the Red Sox last year. Well, you would expect a guy like Rutledge um, looking to move the runner over to third base with nobody out here in the first. And nice trying to make it difficult. First two pitches in on the hands. Gets uh, Rutledge's attention pitch up and in. Rutledge, one of uh, several players up from minor league camp. They train in Fort Myers, do these Red Sox. And that's going to get the job done. Uh, that was not the intention. Um, an infield single has runners at first and third. Not a whole lot Sean Rodriguez could do. You thought maybe off the bat that maybe Nice could get over there and make a play in which he would have had a play at third base to maybe get Betts, the lead runner. But once it gets past Nice, a very difficult ball to handle for Sean Rodriguez. Did all he could. It wasn't enough. Here's Chris Young. Hitting 205 this spring, bunts it hard to Rogers. Rogers looks towards second, doesn't throw there. And it'll be an RBI for Chris Young scoring bets. One out. Yeah, Young uh, just trying to get a ball on the ground and get a run home. And I, I think Jason Rogers would have had a shot at home plate if he comes up firing. The ball was bunted so hard, and Betts did hold up. He was not even halfway home when Rogers gloved that ball he was just kind of reading it and uh, with Rogers retreating Betts coasted home and there you see a good look at Betts there and as soon as he sees Rogers turn his back 
he broke for the plate. Kung Fu Panda Pablo Sandoval hitting 270 this spring. Second year with the Red Sox. Travis Shaw is giving him a run for his money. Shaw not on this trip. Well, um, you would think after signing the big contract that Sandoval signed that nobody could give him a run for his money. Uh, probably more of Sandoval's doing than anything else with the miserable year he had last year. The spring training numbers hit 245 last year. His first season, with 10 home runs. He's had some back issues he's dealt with the last couple days. 2012 World Series Most Valuable Player with the Giants. MVP in that fall classic. And Nice gets him looking. Well, that's a nice looking backdoor cutter. It looked like it started off the plate and watch that movement late coming over the outside corner. And as a hitter, a right handed hitter, you see that pitch leave the hand, you think it's going to be a ball away, you give up on it, and then the late movement catches the corner. And by the time you realize it, it's too late. Now, Ryan Hannigan. Last year in 54 games, his numbers this year in spring training hitting 300. Veteran backstop. Another look at the cutter that uh, John is talking about. Yeah, there you see. I mean, that's an easy pitch to give up on. Is, uh, it's a good look what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, typically, if it's a four-seamer or two-seamer, you may you, you judge a little bit as far as uh, how much plate it may or may not catch. Now this will bring home a run along single to right center field for Hannigan, two nothing, Boston. Pretty much the same pitch, Hannigan. Uh, as you see, Chris Stewart though he wanted it inside. It was left up and out on that outer third. Hannigan, nice approach, staying with it, staying inside. Strike on Blake Swihart. Swihart hitting 219 down in Florida. Red Sox wrapping things up. Here in Florida, we'll have a, an exhibition series in Montreal, Olympic Stadium. They open up the regular season in Cleveland on Monday. John Farrell, good to see him back. Missed much of last year, cancer treatment. Number third, Robert. Kevin Bowles takes care of that foul ball. Bruce Crabb at first. You hear that wind, it is really kicking up. Out toward left. Boy. Two and two on Swihart. Swihart, you know, just the mannerisms and the way he gets into the batter's box reminds me a little of Adam High's do. No batting gloves and kind of the same stance. Nice to spend some time with the Pirates. A lot of years in the minor leagues. Look at that. Tells the story here at McKechnie. It's a familiar sight, though. It's just a matter of what direction. Mostly uh, this spring, it's been blowing straight out to center field. A bit of a crosswind here this afternoon. For the for the most part, early in this game, coming at the hitters with basically a fastball cutter. Twenty-eight 
29-year-old Lima, Ohio native. And then cannot put Swihart away. Nice went 9 and 10 with an ERA of 413 last year in 39 appearances with the Mets. Dave Jous, Flynn Hurdle's bench coach. Enough of that to get it out the outfield. Quite a bit bat for Swihart. First and second, two outs. Nisa, because Swihart was late on many of those offerings, decided to stay hard with them. And um, you know, typically when you jam a guy like as badly as Nice did, you expect a better result than the flare up the middle. So he's thrown uh, 25 pitches, six batters into this last spring training outing, and Ray Searage is going to give him a bit of, of a timeout. Nice this spring coming into this game, 11 innings, 13 hits. A dozen runs, four walks, four strikeouts. Never been a strikeout guy. Pirates will be looking for uh, a lot of ground balls from Nice. Bruce Ney Castillo. Somebody made a heck of a play over there. Yeah. That gentleman brought the glove, put it to good use. Another disappointing contract here, huh? With yeah. Castillo. Yeah. Cuban defector hit uh, 253 in 80 games last year. Hard to find playing time for Castillo. Mm -hmm. Just fouled off. Nice 61 big league wins and 182 major league appearances. 177 of those starts. A seventh round pick of the New York Mets back in 2005 and traded in December for Neil Walker. Curve ball there to Castillo, tried to get him out in front. Was a bit out in front, but able to stay alive with the foul ball. Good idea. And here, Ray Searage. Good idea. Ray Searage likes his guys pitching inside. Nice strikes out Bruce Ney Castillo. A couple strikeouts, but two runs in in the first. Check out the fresh.
2 zip. Pirates coming to bat here in the bottom of the first inning from McKechnie Field. Josh Harrison will be leading things off in this ball game. RAV4 starting lineup. Harrison will be followed by Andrew McCutcheon and then Jason Rogers. Tony Marte hits cleanup, 359 average this spring with a couple of home runs. Gregory Polanco, followed by Sean Rodriguez and Chris Stewart, Pedro Forimon, and John Neese on the hill. See some players still trying to win jobs. Rodriguez is a lock, but getting some time at shortstop. Pirates want to see what they have in Rodriguez, so they put him at short a handful of games in the last couple of weeks. And Jay Hay hitting 292 this spring, and David Price. His first spring training with the Boston Red Sox. And another fine year last year, 18 and 5, 245 ERA, two, over 220 innings pitched. And that will get you a big contract. 225 strikeouts. Opponents hitches 230 against them. Jay Hay with 14 hits and 48 at bats, a 292 average, seven doubles. Hope to see a lot of that during the regular season. I usually do out of Jay Hay. Huh. 217 million dollars for David Price to pitch in Fenway. Harrison up the middle. Jay Hay continues to swing the bat well here this spring training. With the impression with, with Jay Hay, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a spring training game, a regular season game, or a postseason game, he's going at it the same way. McCutcheon, the outstanding numbers from the regular year, 2015. And he has hit five home runs this spring. Batting average of 231. Interesting to see this year, Andrew, in that two hole. And how many opportunities he gets, not only to drive in runs, but to score runs. And the line drive down the line and left, and just foul by inches. And you see, Andrew's talking about the hook. And it, Wind is blowing that way. He was a little bit out in front. He did not get the fastball. Pitch at 85 miles per hour and just got the barrel head out a bit early. And the ball is hooking as it was, plus helped by the wind. Took it just foul. Took a big step and then decided to shut it down. And catch is made. And then right by Betts. And that was such a routine fly ball for Betts. He probably didn't even think of calling off the second baseman Rutledge. And uh, Rutledge kept going out. With his back to the infield, not realizing that his right fielder was camped under it. You know, your second, your middle infielders are you know, told to continue after the ball until they hear the outfielder, but that was such an easy routine fly ball for Betts.
Jason Rogers at the plate. All right. As we speculated, uh, that Matt Joyce was going to make the club, and he did. Made it. They made it official yesterday. So, in terms of battling for the bench spot, if we assume that uh, Michael Morris is in, Morris has uh, been bothered by a hammy, then there would be one spot: Rogers, Figueroa, Florimone. Harrison will wind up at second. Grunt as he was trying to reach out to get that ball and uh, in and out of the glove. One and one on Jason Rogers. It's a beautiful day for baseball. Uh, eat a baseball or just throw it. Two and one on Rogers against David Price, a five time All Star, 104 career wins, 309. Lifetime ERA, the 2012 Cy Young Award winner. Two and two. Yeah, pretty good stuff there. Almost the strikeout per innings pitched. And look at the innings pitched. He has averaged 217 innings pitched since becoming a full time starter. Back with the Rays. And up the middle for Jason Rogers. Josh Harrison waved home. Ball cut off. And Jason Rogers picks up the RBI. It's 2 1. Good approach. And Price tries to go inside, didn't quite get it in there far enough. Hannigan was almost off the plate in. And Rogers just pulls the hands in, stays on top. Marte up there eager looking for a fastball didn't get it got the change up. Marte with. A couple of home runs this spring. 359 average. Hard to think of David Price, um, you know, as when he first came to the big leagues with the Rays, a fireballing lefty that you know would get into the mid 90s, 95, 96. You think of him just as an overpowering type guy, more of a pitcher now than ever. Adds and subtracts, mm. sinks. And this hits Marte. Todd uh, Tomsic, head trainer, going to check on him. So is uh, Clint Hurdle. Mm, right on the instep. And that right foot. Mm. 
He says he's okay. Hopefully stayed away from the bunion. Now Price hits uh, Marte after giving up the RBI single to Rogers. Josh Harrison scoring on that base hit. One out, now Gregory Polanco. Polanco, three infielders on the right side. Pablo Sandoval, the only Red Sox player on the left side of the infield. And ball one. Welcome back, Gregory. Good, f finally back into that starting lineup. Have to face one of the best lefties in the game in Price. Polanco, 9 out of 42 in spring. The home run, that's a 214 average. Hitting fifth in today's lineup. Got that good, good hitters count. 2 0 hit fastball, at least that's what he was looking for. It looked like it had a little cut to it. And running away from the big bat. And now two and two. Dave Dombrowski, the new general manager of the Boston Red Sox, signing David Price to that big $217 million deal. Dombrowski traded Price July 30th last year when he was still with the Tigers and then fired him. Uh, the Tigers fired Dombrowski on August the 4th. Three and two. And two weeks later, became the Red Sox. Well, he's the, the president by title, but he makes all the moves for all intents and purposes. And Sean Rodriguez awaits. And in that shift, I get one out. Two down. Price gets Polanco to bounce to the right side. And with Polanco's speed, everything has to be just about perfect. Um, second baseman Rutledge did all he could to get it quickly to his shortstop. The turn, pretty good, but too much speed from Polanco. Has to be a little strange for the shortstop because he's not in a shortstop position. He's on the yeah. right side of second base, so you're not moving towards the ball uh, as you as you receive the f the feed. You kind of stationary. And it's one of those things we touched on with Dan Fox, the director of informatics for the Pirates. We had him on for a couple of innings our last telecast, and you alluded to it about the shifting that goes on not at the big league level, but you know when is it going to be really introduced at the minor league level so that players that are used to things like that sure so it's not new to them yeah I mean obviously uh, the other thing that was interesting about the discussion was you know they, they gather information from players at all levels so when they do face them that they can make adjustments defensively Sean Rodriguez hitting just 174 this spring Four out of 23. 
If the Pirates feel like Rodriguez can play shortstop for, say, several straight games, if Mercer needed to be rested, does that, if, it, if we're down to one position player left, does that mean that Jason Rogers could make the club? As well as Michael Morse. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that kind of gives you the impression with Rodriguez playing more often at short. Blanco takes off and it's bounced to third. In the dirt, but a smooth looking pick over there by Travis. The Pirates get one through one. Red Sox lead two to one. Jason Rogers with the RBI single in the first inning for the Buccos. They trail 2-1 here at McKechnie Field. I'm Robbie and Smikowski. The Pirates here at spring training have been known to make young kids' days. And today was no different. Seven-year-old Braylon O'Neill paid a visit to the Buccos. Local kid from Bradenton spends a lot of time with Jeff Roy, who's a minor league outfielder for the Bradenton Marauders. Jeff coaches uh, Braylon in his baseball. So he spent time with Clint Hurdle, spent time on the field here, and he was the play ball kid. Greg and John, today, really special day for a seven-year-old kid born without legs, making his way up the baseball ladder and playing the sport that he loves in the Pirates, making his day today just a little bit more special. Cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Robbie, uh, tip of the cap to the Pirates, and then, in particular, Jeff Roy, who played for about a month with the Bradenton Marauders last year. Amazing. Yeah. Really amazing. Sam Travis down on strikes. We bring up Mauricio Dubon. The uh, Red Sox have pretty much decided on their 25 man roster. Again, this is a split squad. So we've got guys like Dubon up from minor league camp. The 26th round pick three years ago. Started last year in low, the lower levels of the Red Sox minor league system. Meanwhile, the Pirates still have 35 players in camp. And they've got to cut 10 by Sunday. Made some more moves yesterday. Rob Scahill. Pirates pitcher option to Indy along with the infielder Jake Gobert, another pitcher Trey Haley, Danny Ortiz, Curtis Parch, Antoine Richardson, Robert Zarate, all reassigned to minor league camp. Moves still need to be made. Jeff Locke. On your left seated next to Ryan Vogelsong. Locke is in the rotation. Vogelsong. Not so sure about the veteran righty. 
he does not begin the year in the rotation, he would pitch out of the bullpen, and John Neese is familiar with that. Pitched out of the bullpen late last year for the Mets. He got the rookie to chase. Again, that backdoor cutter. A late swing from Dubon. Francisco Cervelli going to be okay. He's been just banged up a little bit and hasn't played in a handful of games, but he'll be ready to go Sunday. Seated next to Ray Searage. So Chris Stewart benefiting by getting a lot of action behind the plate this final week. How about Jacob Stallings? Going, yeah, how about that? Deep yesterday. Yeah. Jacob Stallings, dad getting all the attention, named the head coach at the pit, and a nice play on both ends. Rodriguez made the nice pick on the hard hit ball, but then his throw was high, and Rodgers had to go up to get it, did, came down on the bag. Chris Stewart in the box takes a strike from David Price. Final spring training game, but Robbie referred to the Bradenton Marauders last inning, and the Marauders play their home games here in this great ballpark. And Ballpark Digest today. No surprise to us. Should be routine for Dubon, and it is. The online survey, some 12,000 votes, naming McKechnie Field the best ballpark in the Grapefruit League. Again, not a surprise to us or to anybody who has visited this jewel in the friendly city of Bradenton. Now Pedro Florimon. The team leader in runs batted in with a dozen. Talk about getting on base. Got the pitcher Nice behind him. Third baseman Sandoval was playing deep. I can't believe it's over. I mean, this spring, more than any other, flew by. 
It did. It, it absolutely flew. One more tomorrow down in Port Charlotte against the Tampa Bay Rays, and then the exhibition game Saturday in Indianapolis. And the opener on Sunday. You see so many pitchers nowadays, uh, you know, kind of going to kind of out of the stretch, you know, with nobody on base. And David Price, uh, one of those, he kind of looks in for his sign from the stretch and um, does a, a tiny little movement where he maybe kind of just closes himself off just a little bit once he gets his sign. But that's about it for the windup. Finished last season helping the Blue Jays get to the postseason. And you talk to anybody that has been his teammate. Talk to uh, Dave Dombrowski. Quoted earlier about the move to bring in Price. This is fouled off. This is a player that if you were drawing up the total picture for your organization, he told Bob Nightingale of the USA Today, it would be David Price. The ability speaks for itself, but he is so good on a team, the way he interacts with his teammates, his work ethic, his ability to take on a leadership role, good-hearted person, understands a ball club's involvement with the fans and the community, and it's all sincere. Brad Osmus, the manager of the Tigers, said that Price is one of the three best teammates he's ever been around in his 30 years in baseball. Hmm. Jeff Bagwell, Luis Gonzalez, and David Price. And Pedro Florimon drives one against the wind. Ricky Betts tracks it down. Yeah, that ball was hit well. And the only thing keeping that from extra bases was that wind. This year's Pittsburgh Pirates home run 5K 10K is presented by Allegheny Health Network at Highmark, set for Saturday, April 16th. Participants get a tech t-shirt and ticket voucher, good for a Buckos game. Families can join in the fun with a Chick-fil-A one mile family fun run. Register today at pirates.com slash home run. John Neese. One two count on John Neese. Price takes care of his mound opponent. Pirates down by one through two innings at McKechnie.
Pirates Spring Training Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by McDonald's All Day Breakfast. Breakfast has been liberated. By Bordis and Bordis, official legal partner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Visit BordisLaw.com. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Box! 2 1 ball game here. Pirates trail the Red Sox. At McKechnie. Josh Rutledge leads off. We're going to be joined by the Pirates general manager, Neil Huntington, in the bottom half of this inning. Get his take on uh, the moves that were made, still need to be made. Winding down yet another spring for the Pirates general manager. I'm too busy. Jeff Branson is the Pirates hitting coach and sharing some laughs with Clint Hurdle. And once again, a nice back door cut fastball from John Neese. Another strikeout. Check out our Barrel Automotive League leader stat. The teams with the most innings pitched by left handers last season. The Dodgers were tops. Clayton Kershaw took a bunch of those innings and the Pirates second. And once again, they'll have a couple. Well, we know what well, the start of the rotation, the start of the year, it'll be three of the five. Jeff Locke confirmed yesterday. Polanco, long run, but those long legs get there in a hurry. And with the wind the way it's blowing in, Polanco uh, playing fairly deep, so yeah, he could use every bit of that speed to catch up. from these uh, these topped out around 90 miles per hour so far this afternoon but it plays much quicker that's a fine inning and we're going to talk to Neil Huntington coming up bottom of the third Spring training brought to you by McDonald's. The Red Sox lead the Pirates 2-1. Spectacular 
spring afternoon along the sun coast of Florida. Jay Hay going to bunt, try and beat, and will not. First baseman Emily Over to make the play. Travis. Uh, just too close to the first base line for Josh Harrison. A lot of times you'll see it, you know, when you try to push the bunt, you key it off the second baseman. You try to bunt it towards the second baseman to where, um, you know, if the first baseman does get to the ball, you're going to beat the pitcher. If, if uh, you know, the only way they really can throw you out is if the second baseman comes in charging, the first baseman stays home. But even then, that's a tough play. He's ready to go. Yep. And, um, it's loud. A little slider, it looked like. Missed with it middle in. Hit the one to get a little further in. I'm not sure if that's a cut fastball or a slider, but regardless, McCutcheon cracks it. Jason Rogers singled up the middle in the first to bring home the Pirates' run. Rogers has played first and third this spring. Can also on occasion play a corner outfield spot, but mainly used corner infield positions. Pirates wanted to see what they had in him at third base. Andrew McCutcheon takes off. And he is out. Ryan Hannigan. On to Josh Rutledge. Pretty good jump from Andrew McCutcheon. There goes first movement against Price. The head first slide. It took pretty much a perfect throw from Hannigan. Quick release. Throw pretty much right on the bag. Rio count. We're actually going to talk to Neil Huntington next inning, oh. bottom of the fourth. And Rogers draws the walk. Something he has done a bunch this spring. A new season of Pirates baseball at PNC Park. It all starts Sunday when the Cardinals come to town 105 for opening day. And the series will continue after Monday's off day, Tuesday and Wednesday nights. 7.05 starts next week. Visit Pirates.com. Get your opening series tickets. Should be right out of the gate. An exciting series at PNC Park. Bucks and Cardinals. David Price starts off Marte the same way in this third inning at bat as he did in the first inning at bat. First pitch changeup, Marte out in front and coming up empty. <laughs> Marte hit on the back foot ankle. It's first time. And that's such a good pitch change up when you're up there, you're anticipating fastball. Looking to drive it somewhere, and then he pulls the string and 
and you're out in front. And Marte goes down swinging on the pitch in the dirt. Second strikeout for Price. The Red Sox lead the Bucks by one. Check out the fresh new. A 2-1 Red Sox lead as we head to the fourth inning at McKechnie. We're going to check out an Allegheny Health Network injury update earlier this week. Jung Ho Gong started playing defense in games over Pirate City and today started hitting and running the bases. Will not run all the way through just yet. And he'll uh, run to first but then not make those turns just yet. And if he hits a home run, wait, he did hit a home run today. So he just had a slow jog around the bases after hitting a home run over at Pirate City. All rooting for Jung Ho to make his return. In on the hands. Just a weak one hopper. Hannigan is retired. Jung Ho Gong. I'm Jung Ho. Well, I look forward to seeing that bat. I certainly have missed him. Um, you know, it wasn't his best spring last year, his first spring training with the Pirates, but man, that. The way he uses his hands and the way the ball jumps off his bat that will be fun to watch this year. Hopefully no more setbacks and we'll see him in April. Blake Swihart had a single. Starting catcher most nights. Two and one on Lake Swihart. And that's a fair ball. And gets past Marte, but Swihart will hold at second with a double. And Swihart had a hard time uh, catching up in that first at bat against Nice. Uh, Several fastballs he kept uh, fouling off his hands the other way before blooping a ball in the center. This time he gets the barrel out. And then Marte, no harm, no foul. Would have never had to play at second anyhow. So. First gold glove last year, Starling Marte. Looking to continue to make strides, not only uh, his great defense, but the offense. Hitting clean up a lot this spring, figures to begin the year as the number four hitter. Drove in 81 runs last season. Part of the fun of opening day, the pregame festivities will include uh, 
Starley Marte getting that gold glove officially. Harrison two down. And Jay Hay, I think he'll miss a little bit moving around, playing all over the place, but uh, I also think he's happy just having one position, using one glove for most, if not all, of the year. New right side of the infield for opening day. John Jaso at first and Josh Harrison at second. And a pop up. And there he is. Two one, Bo Sox. Pirates Spring Training Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by the brand new all-wheel drive Toyota RAV4 Drive Hybrid. There's so much to discover with just one tank. And by UPMC, life-changing medicine. Let's go Bucks! Gregory Polanco leads off the bottom of the fourth inning. Ah! And takes a strike from David Price. Sean Rodriguez on deck. Soaking it all in. This finale. And that's perfect. Double. Sandoval well off the line. Polanco. Doubles. Yeah, it's not the, the prettiest hit or the hardest hit ball or anything to be real proud of but uh, that's a breaking ball that was up and Polanco just slaps it gets it just inside the bag and takes off knowing as soon as he hit that that he had a chance for a double those long strides would have taken a perfect throw now Sean Rodriguez not about looking down at Polanco. Having some fun.
Sean Rodriguez bounced to third his first time up. harder than that. And Sandoval giving up his body. I mean, there was a play earlier where um, Sean Rodriguez had a bullet hit at him by Mookie Betts. And about like that. Where um, you see a lot of infielders kind of bail out of the way when that ball is hit as hard as it was and you get a little in-between hop, but you know, Rodriguez picked it clean back in the second on that ball hit by Betts and Sandoval staying in front and makes the play here. And there goes Polanco for third. And he's going to be out. Second runner that Hannigan has thrown out. Polanco looked like he dropped the batting glove on his way in from third. And, uh, typically, when you're when you're trying to steal third, a lot of base runners will try to get off of a little bit of a walking lead, get some momentum. And you saw there that uh, Polanco you know, kind of at a standstill before breaking. Ball, one strike. You know what, John? It looks like Polanco also still not comfortable in terms of when to begin the slide. It's it, it, in addition to your point about that standstill. I don't know if you saw it on that last uh, shot we had, where it almost looks like he's looking, slowing down for a place to begin his slide. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you have to assume that he's been sliding for almost 20 years. <laughs> And, and he's been this fast for probably 10. Uh, and I would think that feet first, you think? I mean, regardless if it's feet first or head first, you should have a pretty good idea as to when to get in the dirt. Watch him here. Just a little. Yeah, there was a little stutter, stutter step. step, yeah. And that could be uh, kind of in between, you know what I mean? Like if he takes another long stride, he'd be too close to the bag, or if he tried to start a slide, he'd be too far. So. Uh, just try to put himself in a position. I, I, I'm guessing, not sure, but. Call third strike. Still 2 1 Boston. Car accident? Yeah, me too. Got a lawyer. Yeah. Sitting on Root Sports between the Pirates and the Boston Red Sox, I'm Robbie Ince Mikowski, and we're doing a special interview today, and this is with one of the interns for the Pittsburgh Pirates and Bradenton Marauders. This is Justin Stansel. He is just 18 years of age and a senior in high school amidst, uh, in the midst of what is a fantastic experience. Now, Justin, you had a pretty big task over the last week or so. What exactly was that task that you were asked to do? Well, I had to find the keys to the batter's box that allegedly the Twins had lost. So the Twins lost the keys to the batter's box, and how did that search go, and were you able to find them? No, it was not, because the keys to the batter's box don't exist. 
So the keys to the batter's box don't exist. And uh, this is one of the time-honored traditions in all of baseball. You take a young person their first year uh, working with a team, and you send them for the keys to the batter's box, which uh, obviously uh, are phantom keys. Now, my question is this, Justin. How many people exactly did you ask for the keys to the batter's box? Well, hang on. Let me pull up my list here. Around. Whoa. That's a lot of people. Let's all right. Who'd you ask? Let's see. I spoke with Jake Gobert, Terry Ryan, the general, the Twins general manager, Paul Molder, the Hall of Famer Twins manager, Ken Rosenthal from MLB Network, Clint Hurdle, Mike Tomlin, Tim Tradinich, the highly talented PR director for the Pirates, which by the way was the highlight of my spring, and Greg Brown, the Pirates play-by-play -play guy, endless other people. So, including my boss Trevor Gooby, who set up the whole thing. Man, you are a fantastic sport and spending five, six days looking for the keys to the batter's box, Justin. How do you feel about this whole experience? Well, I got to say, I'm pretty good at laughing at myself. And once they told me that it was all a joke, I, I got a pretty big kick out of it because I was just so determined to find them. And the fact that two people actually told me that it was a big joke and I didn't believe them, it, it was pretty funny to finally find out that it was a joke. So let this be a learning lesson to anyone working in Major League Baseball or about to get a job. If they send you for the keys to the batter's box, don't go for it or you end up with a list like this. Greg, oh, you were asked for them as well. What a great sport, though, as you said, Robbie. Justin, he, he couldn't have been better. I mean, and I think that's why Trevor Gooby, the director of Florida Operations, uh, did it with him knowing he could uh, take a joke. And uh, John Wayner was also on that list. Justin came in the other day and asked us both, and uh, I was... <laughs> I was turning my, I couldn't look at him, <laughs> biting my lip. And you said something like, well, how does Trevor not have them? Well, I, I, well, I said was, how does Trevor only have one, <laughs> one set? set. <laughs> I mean, Trevor how certainly Trevor <laughs> has multiple sets. Have more sets. <laughs> <laughs> as good as Trevor Gooby is, he wouldn't just have one set of keys to the batter's box. <laughs> and so, oh, man. Uh, but, that um, was great. <laughs> At one point, you know, he was he's such a good guy, Justin. He's up here and and I've got my back to him and you're trying to because I didn't want to laugh. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm doing my notes and uh, you said, how could Trevor not have more than than one <laughs> set? And, and you would say later that at one point you, you were going to say, you know what, just go get the other set. <laughs> you're going to get mad at him. Just go ask uh, Trevor for the other just set. Just go get the extra set. Oh, boy. And he did say, well, Trevor did tell me if he had to make Come another yeah. set, he would I'll make it. another set. <laughs> John Neese goes four innings, and now Corey Lubke. Neese, uh, a little bit of a rough first inning. Looked much better. And now Lubke still in the running for a spot in the bullpen. And Sean Rodriguez is trying to convince the Pirates that he could play shortstop for a time anyway. C commits only the 15th air of the spring for the Pirates. Yeah, that last top just kind of came up on him. And you know, you, you look at Sean, he's always so prepared and ready for every ball put in play, no matter where he plays, infield, outfield, right or left side of the infield. And, and you know, the ball's hit, he's moving. You can see it peripherally. You're looking at home plate, and, and as the ball's being struck, Sean is in the direction of where that ball is going, and he got a good jump on it. And just, to, I think, anticipated that ball to just stay on the ground, and it came up and handcuffed him a bit. Josh Rutledge at the plate. Lukey, the veteran, undergoing two Tommy John surgeries before he was even able to pitch again in pro ball after some success with the San Diego Padres. That's a good looking play there from Florimal. The out. Yes, indeed. Going to his right, making sure 
gets rid of it quickly and accurately and that's not a ball you're going to turn two on and so Josh Harrison does the right thing just kind of get to the bag like a first baseman take the throw get out of the way. Chris Young at the plate. Neil Huntington has been very busy, needless to say, and he will be joining us in the bottom of this fifth inning now. Signing Corey Lukey, a non roster invitee. I can't imagine how difficult that process would be to not only go through the rehab process once, but twice after the ligament transfer. Has there ever been a third? I mean, is there a know, third man. ligament that you could use? I mean, yeah. I know there's there's been you know a few that have gone through it twice and and, and have uh, have been able to recover and get back to the big leagues, but I think they uh, they they tried perhaps to do three. I don't know that I, anyone has actually come back. From three offhand. But just the fact that it was back to back, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And Serge certainly appreciates the uh, the efforts. The determination of a guy like Corey Loki. Eric O'Flaherty traded last week. Loki very much in the running. And as we have said before, John pointed this out early on. People talk about wanting a second lefty in the bullpen. That's you know, literally true because Tony Watson is in as the setup man, but because Watson is automatically in there for the eighth inning against lefties and righties. You, you don't even include him as a lefty. Popped up. Rogers over to take a look. Well, that particular pop up stays in play over the last several days when that wind was bowling straight out. It's helped keep balls in play that were hit in foul ground on the first base side. Jason Isringhausen had three Tommy Johns. I mean you only have so many years to yeah. play this sport yeah. and figure it's your livelihood and, and, and to you know, let's say a, a good major league career you, you play for 10 years mm -hmm. and, and if you're rehabbing for three of those yeah. years. How frustrating. But it would all be worth it. Obviously if. The comeback. And all that hard work. And getting back to normal then you get back to the major leagues. It really does tell you something about a guy's effort and determination that sure. you know that that's a big part of. Uh, when you acquire a player. You know what kind of mental toughness he's got. And then. Not going through it I, I, you know but I, I can't imagine it's not easy it's not right. like it's just rest. Yes it's the exact opposite. Yeah it's. Anything you know, but just rest. strengthening everything around it. Look toward deep center field and McCutcheon can't get there and this will bring in a run. Ball bounces around the track. Chris Young into third with a triple. And this ball was hit awfully hard by Young. Only the wind keeps it in the ballpark. Touching with the foot first slide coming up just short. Yeah, 
Well, Pablo Sandoval. Struck out looking and popped up against John Neese. Neese four innings, five hits, a couple of runs, didn't walk about her, struck out five. And this ball hit to McCutcheon for out number three. Neil Huntington next. Scoreboard 3-1, Boston leads in the uh, final home game at McKechnie. Heading to the bottom of the fifth inning, and as promised, Neil Huntington joins us in the broadcast booth. Neil, thanks for joining us. I know how busy this time is, and it, it, it can be uh, exciting, I'm sure, for the general manager, but might be the toughest part of your job, isn't it? It is, because unfortunately you have tough internal conversations about how you're putting the club together and, and what are those last decisions. We've had some really challenging ones and still have some challenging ones. Then you have those decisions, you have those discussions uh, with the players, and oftentimes those discussions lead to additional discussions as well as just putting together X's and O's and administrative parts of, of what we're going to do in the clubhouse when we get back north and changes we're making up there. So there's just a, a lot of little things that add up as, as camp winds down, but there are also some huge things that, that add up as, as camp winds down. Those are your decisions and how you articulate those and, and connect those with your players. Now you've made some decisions. You made some more uh, moves yesterday. The roster you announced that Jeff Fly is is in not that that was much question coming into spring training but uh, and Matt Joyce on the club but with only two preseason games left do you still in your mind have to have to come to grips with some things you know what the roster is for Sunday right <laughs> yeah you're not gonna tell us now no, but I know you know it no we're, we're there's a difference between to be determined and to be announced and, and the challenge is um, sometimes that there's an injury lingering sometimes there's the risk of an injury sometimes there's a roster move that's irreversible that 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 you can and cannot make um, there sometimes it, it's just how does one player impact the other player um, so so while there are some yeah there, there are still some some decisions to technically be made we've got a pretty good idea of where we're going and, and uh, we've got some guys that that are still in camp that that are getting some great experience and, and if we have an injury they can step up uh, and, and they're still in camp for that reason we have some guys in camp that that are on the outside looking in but they're that next wave of defense when we have a need because unfortunately as we talk about it all the time we're going to need more than 12 pitchers we're going to need more than 13 position players so these guys are the air gets a little thin the later in camp you get the air gets a little more thin and, and a little bit more challenging and we want to see how some of these guys react to it and, and because they are they're, they're most likely going to be our first wave is there also I mean I know everybody's trying to cut down to a number but is there trade talk at this time of the year as well it's more uh, what 
what do you have that's that from a player standpoint that's not going to make your club what do you have extra of and, and, and you hope to match up well this club has an extra X and this club has an extra Y and, and do we have a need for X or Y and so there are there are a ton of conversations are ongoing whether it's your, your scouts out in the field whether it's your, the other guys in the front office or myself to other general managers you're really just checking in and touching base and seeing who needs to move what player um, who's out of options or, or who hasn't fit for them or who's uh, lost a job because somebody came in and, and had a great spring or somebody's lost a job because they didn't have a great spring and so those conversations are ongoing but not typically is big time moves it's more the the bottom of the roster type moves we just saw uh, Pedro Florimon and uh, so he's a guy that uh, we, we, you'd think is obviously anybody that's still here is literally still in the mix because of what you just talked about Neil and we were curious that if we assume that Michael Morris is okay uh, he's been banged up a little bit and he's been DHing and it is, if, if we as fans assume that he's on the club uh, it, it apparently comes down to three players as we're playing GM with you. Uh, we've got Flory Moan, uh, Rogers, and Figueroa. Yes. Is, is that right as a fan well, to think of it that way? Morse's health is, is not a big question, but Morse's health is a driving factor in that because the, the other challenge is if, if you option a player um, and, and then need a short term fill, that player's gone because that player's option and there's a rule that, that, rep, that uh, restricts how quickly we can bring that player back without putting another player on the disabled list. So yeah, you really have to walk within a, a variety of, of scenarios and restrictions as you're making these final send downs before you get to the final game of spring training. And that's where we have typically waited until Philadelphia where we, we used to play the, the Friday, Saturday and why there may be a decision or two that, that we don't announce until Saturday because you always have injury. I go back a couple of years ago, we were in Philadelphia and if we cut to 12 pitchers, Chris LaRue hurt his, his uh, pack in Philadelphia, um, but because he, we, I think we were at 13 or 14 pitchers, Chris being on the bubble at that point in time. Now he got hurt. We ended up putting him on the disabled list and somebody else made the club. So uh, if we option somebody out and then we don't need the disabled list, but we need a second catcher or we need a, a, another backup infielder, um, it, it, it makes it challenging. Now we've got some guys that are off the roster that, that we're looking to potentially add to the roster that we're at 40 right now. Um, so that becomes a part of, of your, your plan and your strategy of, of how do you hopefully get a player through waivers if you want to retain them or is there a chance you're going to lose them or do you, give the, do you give yourself a chance to make a trade not only at the end of spring training but during that designated period of the first week of the season or so. Will there definitely be 12 pitchers? Well, and that's the other thing that we've talked about, Rock, is is we play Sunday, we're off Monday, we play Tuesday, Wednesday, we're off Thursday. Um, so is there a scenario in which we we carry 11 pitchers? Um, and can we configure the rotation to allow one of those starters to work out of the bullpen for the first three or four days of the season? Um, because we don't need a fifth starter until our, uh, you know, until we get to the fifth time, that, that we're fifth consecutive game. So that is a part of the conversation. Um, but we're, we're still so we're still working through some different components and and what's the strongest rotation what's the strongest bullpen not only for Sunday but for for Tuesday for Wednesday and then Friday Saturday Sunday and then from there on out and uh, it, it is a scenario we, we will go with 12 pitchers when we need five starters uh, but we don't necessarily need five starters right out of the gate now part of that is contingent upon Garrett Cole continuing continuing to build up and get stretched out and, and he's on course to be able to do that uh, so there's not really decisions to be made, Brownie, coming back to your original question, but there are still some scenarios that need to work themselves out. Help, stretching out, uh, makeup, composition of a bench, composition of a bullpen. Do you put out almost on a legal pad, uh, in essence, of course, you know, we, we, we have the, the smartphones and devices, and, and put the, these different scenarios, you and, and uh, Clint Hurdle, and, and say, okay, this is, this is the A plan. Uh, depending on Cole and all the other things, Michael Morris and all, and this is the B plan. Is that we, kind of yeah, we, we do. There's there's different scenarios that you run through, and and uh, uh, Clint's much better on paper. I'm I'm much better on Excel. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, not not a Figure. promotion for Microsoft <laughs> Excel or anything. Although if they want to send me some money because I just uh, would take it. But but uh, you do. You, you run through the various scenarios and, and you look at what you believe makes you the strongest and and. And you also have fallback and, and what happens if X happens? What happens if Y? What happens if Z? And, and this player can't go, this player can go, this player steps forward, this player steps back. 
what if Armageddon hits? Mm -hmm. uh, Clint Hurdle talks all the time about uh, one of his years as the Rockies general manager, and we've still got two games left here, three, two and a half games left here. Uh, they lost three starters, starting pitchers, in the final week of spring training. Now, that's an Armageddon scenario from a baseball standpoint. And wow. So you're always keeping that in the back of your mind, and that's why it's so much fun to see Trevor Williams come out and pitch so well the other day against Baltimore after a rough first inning. And I saw some good things out of Stephen Brault, but got hit, hit around yesterday in Tampa. But uh, that's where those five young starters really intrigue us. And we've got six good starters here on the Major League Club. One of them will end up in the, will start the season in the bullpen, and uh, you never have enough good pitching. Josh Harrison. Deep left. Oh, a heck of a play by the veteran Chris Young. Can you stick around for another half inning? I, sh I sure can. Thank you. Neil Huntington will uh, continue as we go to the sixth. Pirates Spring Training Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network, Health for All, and by Barrel Automotive. Check out the Barrel Hot List at Barrel.com. Now, the only way to buy a car. Let's go Bucks! 3-1, Red Sox lead as we go to the sixth inning. Final game here at McKechnie Field in Bradenton. Pirates play in the Port Charlotte tomorrow and then fly to... Uh, Indianapolis off day Friday Neil in Indy and then I know that the big league clubs always try and do what they can with minor league teams pay visits on occasion and this is uh, something that has been in the works for a while you'll be going to Victory Field and Saturday afternoon playing the Cincinnati Reds uh, it, it's good on the one hand because you get a chance to to pay tribute to the folks at Indy but uh, also some trying times because you're getting, getting ready for the season. No no question and, and when we initially scheduled it we were supposed to have Sunday as the off day uh, and then open on Monday traditional opening day and then Major League Baseball and ESPN uh, honored us with the request to, to open on Sunday and to be the first game of the season against the Cardinals and it's awfully hard to turn them down when they when they when they make that request so now that's where we, we play in Indy on Saturday afternoon and open at home in Pittsburgh on, on Sunday afternoon uh, wasn't the, the way we initially lined it out but it gives us an opportunity to go to go say thank you to the people of Indianapolis whether it's the front office whether it's their ownership and, and their tremendous fan base or facility it's a it's a great relationship it's a great facility and, and uh, we feel very fortunate to be there uh, we got a four-year extension there we got a chance to be there for for again four years beyond this year and hopefully deep into the future go play the Reds uh, get used to the cold which we, when we went to Philadelphia we loved getting under the lights you love getting in front of the fans and the energy that they bring you love getting in a big league ballpark and you do you need to play in the cold before the first time you play in the cold which it sounds like it's going to be cold in Pittsburgh on Sunday as well um, as far as I, I know one fear and you talked about Armageddon and, and, and this is teams played pretty I mean they've stayed knock on wood pretty healthy this spring except for some nagging things is there any concerns with any of these guys 
here recently? No, just some some uh, some some dents in the in uh, with a few guys here and there, and obviously McCutcheon uh, lost a day. Polanco's lost a couple of days. Marte lost a couple of days. Uh, overall, we, we're being aggressive with keeping them out of the lineup. If there's any question whatsoever, they've got a lot of at bats. They've got a ton of swings in the tunnels. They've got a ton of defensive work. They're ready to go. Let's get them. Nobody's 100%. Rocky, you know that is nobody's 100% once opening day starts. In fact, you're not 100% after the first day of spring training. You're dealing with some anchor pain. Or, or something that's just not quite right. So we're trying to give these guys some downtime to get out there and, and, and get off to as good a start as we possibly can. Marte, second out. Two down here in the sixth inning. It, it, it looks like Lupe, Lupe might have a quick inning, which would be great uh, because he's, he's a great story. Uh, pleased, concerns. You always have concerns, I know, uh, every spring. But, but what about this one in particular? You never have enough pitching, and, and, and we love the quality of our arms. We love the quantity of our arms. We love that young group. Um, we, we're looking to, to piece this bullpen together. We're looking to, to put as strong a bullpen, as strong a rotation as we can together. Corey Luke is making a, a, a push to get into this. What a great story that would be after three trying physical years, uh, especially the second half of last year, losing it to the staff infection, not even the Tommy John, but the staff infection. So he's got great stuff and, and uh, sharpening up here a little bit. Um, we've got the triple-A group. Typically, you're concerned about your depth, and, and we love our depth. It's just going to be young and, and not wanting to push those guys if we have a need early. So making sure we've got enough of those veteran players around to come in and fill if we have a need. You, you never have enough pitching, but we do like the arms that we have. We do like the six starters and think we can put a pretty good bullpen together. Health is the biggest challenge for any mid-market, small market as you go forward. Neil, thanks so much. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Neil Huntington, the Bucko general manager as the Pirates and Red Sox head to the bottom of the sixth. Day Automotive, great day from last season. Perhaps the biggest moment from last year. Andrew McCutcheon's walk-off home run against the Cardinals July 11th. Got the Bucks with a three and a half to first place Cardinals. What an incredible finish to the first half as the Pirates went into the All-Star break. With that momentum and uh, walk-off, game-winning home run in the 14th inning. And lo and behold, the Pirates will host the Cardinals very first pitch of the Major League Baseball season will be in Pittsburgh. Our thanks to Neil Huntington. And he makes a lot of sense as to why he waits to announce a 25 man roster. Uh, things that you really don't think about and here. Uh, the Red Sox with the more I thought about this I didn't want to say this directly to him. I didn't want him not that he would be ripping on the Red Sox but why wouldn't you wait. Yeah. When you've got the time just in case. Yeah. Of those scenarios the thing that I mean it's nice as a player to know you could still yeah. tell a player it's like chances are you're not going to make the club yeah. but if something happens yeah. we're keeping you around and, and you know because I know as a player you'd rather know sooner than later mm -hmm. 
especially these last several days. New pitcher, Matt Barnes. Facing McCutcheon, who was one for two. McCutcheon, Rogers, and Marte. But just got to feel like every general manager in baseball at this time holding his breath. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That, that would be probably the worst news is to have an injury late. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, they have an idea. You worded it perfectly in terms of <laughs> they, they probably know what they're going with come opening day, but just in case. But you would think, you know, especially late in camp, you very rarely see any significant trade moves or anything like that. But, you know, certain teams do have extra guys that they don't plan on carrying that you think would hold value elsewhere that maybe during the season after an injury or so you'd be able to make a trade for. But because of spring training and because you're trying to pare down the roster, there, there, there usually isn't room to make a move. Toward shallow right. Oh, Travis went in there hard. And thank goodness for padded walls. Uh, as there's been a number of balls. As McCutch is happy he gets another crack at it. <laughs> and there's been, there's been a few balls hit that way that normally stay in play. But with the wind, the wind's pushing it out. And you see there both knees into that padded wall. And that would not feel good if. Those walls weren't heavily padded. Line to right. Andrew McCutcheon. And they have his second hit. Takes advantage of that extra opportunity. Yeah, he wanted that at bat. He wanted yeah. uh, another swing. And man, look at this. You don't see this much from McCutcheon. You see him hit the ball the other way in the gap, base hits. But you don't see him go down the line the other way very often. And it was almost like, hey, I'm getting another fastball away. I'm just going to stay on it and, and slap it that way. And, and it just looks so easy for him, so effortless. Now Jason Rogers, he has an RBI single and a walk in this ball game. I heard uh, General Manager Neil Huntington talking about the scenarios and bringing up the point about Michael Morse's help being something that is coming into play or could come into play. And we're talking about the extra and your point too, John. I thought uh, really uh, revealing that uh, they are definitely they haven't announced that, but considering beginning the year with an 11 man staff which would be the first in maybe decades of this Pirates yeah, team. It seems like but, it's been but, a while. But. Uh, it, it, it does make some sense when you have a couple of those early off days. Sure. And therefore if say Juan Nicasio is announced as one of the starters after the game and if they decide that Vogelsong would begin the year as, as a long man uh, something that that things could change it's it's fluid uh, with off days and so on and Cole whether Cole would be ready the, the first time out and it'd be nice to have that flexibility I think for Clint Hernell with his guys off the bench uh, you know um, as you sit there and you think about with Sean Rodriguez playing short and the possibility of not having Figueroa. Yeah, that's a good point. Or for him. Yeah. Then, you know, you've got to be careful with how yeah. you use Sean Rodriguez. I mean, he's your only backup middle infielder. And so um, 
And, and, it's, and it's obviously an easy change if you do go with only 11 pitchers, 14 position players, and, and, and then you end up going into that bullpen and use more of it than you want to the first couple of games. That's Cole Figueroa there, by the way. It, it's, an easy, it, it's an easy fix to add that pitch, pitcher. I mean, you just end up sending out one of the position players you talked about before the end of spring training, and you bring up a pitcher, and, and, and your problem solved. Whereas if you're if you're pitching and you know does pitch well early and you don't use much of your bullpen then you can carry that extra position player for at least a week because you don't need a fifth starter until uh, Detroit which is your second city in your first road trip. Yeah, great great points. Jason Rogers is having a good day at the plate. Buck Knight presented by Sugardale. April 5th, Pirates play the Cardinals. Lock in $1 tickets when you download the MLB.com ballpark app on your smartphone. Special offer. Go to Pirates.com slash Buck Knight. It's Tuesday, April the 5th. Offer, by the way, only uh, valid through the rest of this day, so limited quantities. Pirates.com slash Buck Knight. Come on, baby. Marte in the center. Marte. Flies out to Castillo. And he has been hit by a pitch, struck out and flied out. It'd be great to see this guy get off to a fast start. Gregory Polanco. Ground ball double inside the bag at third against David Price. This could be uh, one impressive outfield if, if, if Pedro, excuse me, Gregory Polanco is able to reach the potential. The much, so much hype since he's come to the big leagues, and you know McCutcheon's going to do his thing. You expect. Even a better year from Marte. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and predict 100 RBIs for Marte if he stays healthy. How about that. You know, with the way, I mean, if it stays the way it is with McCutcheon in that two hole, uh, I just, just see so many opportunities for the middle of this lineup. And whether he's four or five, uh, maybe three at some point in time in the, in the order if McCutcheon stays in that two hole. And then you, you, have, you add Polanco to the mix where. At some point in time, Polanco is going to hit 20 plus homers. And it's not a stretch to suggest that he can be a 300 hitter in the big leagues. Oh, that's pretty. McCutcheon will score easily. Rogers, and he held a third on the double by Polanco twice. His doubles have gone the other way. Yep, that is a pretty swing. The big man, he, he has such good hands, able to spray the ball all over the, the ballpark. And you see they're keeping that head down, keeping the hands inside. There are times when he'll go up there and you can tell when he wants to be a little quick and look to pull the ball. That's when you see the times he goes to chasing. But that's a pretty good approach right there. John Rodriguez looking for a solid at bat here. On the ground balls to the left side of the infield. And this isn't a bad time. I mean, to, to shorten up and, and hit a ground ball. It's a, it's a one-run ball game, and, and 
You, know, you want to get one of them home. You get on top of a ball and you stay up the middle. You're getting one home for sure. If it gets through, you, know, you, you drive home two. And the conditions here today aren't for fly balls anyhow with the wind blowing in. And so you know, your approach is to hit the top half up the middle, and especially now with two strikes. Two. Staying with the fastball is Barnes. And you hear so often pitchers talked about, you know, pitching down in the zone. And this is a situation where if you're going to stay with the fastball, you may be better off elevating it, getting it up above the belt. See if you get a chase or a pop up. And to throw that fastball down, that's a pitch that'll be a little easier for Sean Rodriguez to hit on the ground. Seven down, two and two. Barnes in 32 appearances last year for the Red Sox, 5.44 ERA. Danbury, Connecticut native. And again, Sandoval for the third. Time will throw out Sean Rodriguez. Yeah, got off the fastball, went to, I believe, a slider, and so Sean Rodriguez out in front. And that's the one ball, you know, it's predetermined. Before the ball is hit, the third base coach, Rick Sofield, Goes over to Jason Rogers and says, hey, up the middle on the ground, you're going. If it's at the third baseman, you got to stay here. Stewart, 0 for 2 against starter David Price, now facing the right-hander Matt Barnes. Looking for a foul ball, maybe, huh? Any kind of opportunity, bringing that glove. Pirates start the regular season Sunday, off day Monday, two. Night games against the Cardinals Tuesday and Wednesday nights. Travel to Cincinnati. First road trip three with the Reds two with the Tigers before they're back home. Two with Detroit. Three with the Brewers. Not a lot of action at the PNC Park in April for the Bucks. There's Ten games at home the first month of the season so they will be tested. Such a great record last year in front of the home crowd. 53 and 28 at home last year. Most home wins for a Pirates team since 1992. I always thought that was a good idea to, to go out west in April. Cold weather yeah. cities. Yeah. This 
noticed by a lot. You can hear the reaction. A lot of Red Sox fans here. The Pirates will be traveling to San Diego, Arizona, and Colorado last almost two weeks of the uh, month of April. In Colorado, you never know what you're going to get there in April. Right. You can get a foot of snow yeah. 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. Pedro Florimon had a couple of good at bats, good contact, nothing to show for it. Hoping to get a chance here. Oh, roller to second. And Rutledge tosses out Chris Stewart. Head to the 7 3 2 Boston. Check out the fresh new look on McDonald's. Mc Oh, we're back. Sorry about that. We're just chatting here. We're spring training. That's the way spring training is. We we chat off the air. Brought to you by McDonald's Spring Training 2016. Taking a look at the uh, white sands, the Gulf, the great the beaches here in the Bradenton, Sarasota area. 3-2 Red Sox. We just got scolded, by the way, by our producer, Adam Elmore. Get your headsets on. Well, oh. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking with the man here, Sam Holzer from PNC. Makes his annual trip in. You, 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 so, so what I say? <laughs> That's all right. No, you got all this. This so, Cy Holzer. Yeah, I got did, say, did you say Sam? Is that, did you say Sam? No, I didn't. Did I say Sam? No, I mean, honest to God. I, I, sometimes I call you. You know Sam. what I think it is? Well, if you show it's up, the, it's the sun. It's spring it's training. You're allowed to do these things. Cy Holzer, Brownie, the president of PNC. Hey, what do you what do you think about the the club? Opening day starts Sunday. What are you thinking? Well, first of all, it is the best. Thing in the world when we get baseball back. All those long rides you take without baseball, all those moments would you love to have a game finally back. So, and Sunday is going to be interesting because it's the first Sunday night game I think ever in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall ever opening uh, on a Sunday. In fact, I don't, I could be wrong on this, but I don't think the Pirates have ever opened the season, be the first game ever. I don't think so. Do you want to announce what this is? No, we're, that's t this is TV. That's what <laughs> yeah, they can see it. Yeah, that's uh, Pete Toma, our director, doing a great uh, job. Do I, the pictures. Do I love AJ you guys Shugel. off season. You're tremendous. Well, this is the great thing about spring training. <laughs> it is great. You know? It is great. It, it, I mean, it, it's important. Don't, we're not trying to make any light of the fact that A.J. Shugel, who is still on the roster and, and oh! trying to make the club, uh, out there now on the mound. But it is oh, so relaxed down here. Yeah. So much fun. I like spring training uh, every bit as much as I like the season. And especially this this park is so conducive to watching baseball. It just reminds me of the way old days, a little bigger, of course, Forbes Field. 
But you, and you watch the fans, they're relaxed. The, the entire program here uh, is just amazing. I, I, I got to the uh, clubhouse and talked to Clint. And uh, I mean, he's so pumped up, just so pumped up. And the, and the, and the coaches are pumped up. So wish we had a few more wins in spring training. That's a yeah, little hint. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact is that, uh, you know, the Pirates have just done some great things. And there is the strikeout. So two up and two down. Cy Holzer, president of PNC Bank, is with us. And uh, he makes the annual trip down here to watch his Buckos at uh, McKechnie Field. And it is a spectacular setting. This is the last home game of the spring. So there's an extra anticipation going on. The fact that the Pirates open up the regular season on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, this is the latest I've ever come, but I, I couldn't get her sooner. And I just never want to miss it. Uh, this is just one of those dream trips. You come here and you watch, uh, you know, baseball with people who are just really trying to make a team. And, and then the players who are here obviously have to do the right things. You know this better than anything, John. Oh yeah, believe me. I know. I know the. I know the <laughs> agony of getting sent out in the last week of the season. I've uh, experienced it many times. <laughs> I've been pumping Frank. I've been sitting with Frank uh, Thunley, who's been giving me a tutoring, uh, and he will not the tell roster. me. Oh, he, he will won't. not I tell me. Give us a scoop here. Oh, I wish I could do it, but he just won't tell me. <laughs> well, popped up to right, and with well, that wind, look at the wind playing a trick. On one of the minor leaguers, Stetson Alley is out in right field. Alley, the former pitcher, has played mostly first base. But uh, yeah, knowing the wind here is, uh, if you can play outfield in spring training here in Florida, uh, you can play anywhere because it's the high sky, the sun, the wind's always blowing. You always have, a, have to have an idea what the ball is going to do. Uh, when it gets up into the wind, and we wanted to keep you around a little while longer. That's anyway. right. I'm going to say goodbye. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to be here for an inning. That's what I are. I was told. That's you know, it. It's trying it. to get yeah. my. Thing. But you know, this this is like here. I don't know that fella, but I feel badly for him. I just feel badly. That's what you can do in spring training. You feel badly. Yeah, because because you want to try and uh, imp I mean, these guys are out there to impress. This is yeah. this is meaningful, and we're we're having fun up here, and it right. is for fans. But for a guy like Stetson Alley, who was a, an early round pick of the Pirates, a second round pick as a pitcher, hard throwing pitcher, and then trying to make the transformation to first base. And now he's out in right field on, and then John has talked about this and other former players sigh about how di this is a, one of the most difficult fields in which to play because of these conditions. But I'll tell you what you have seen, the transformation of this park by the, you know, by Frank and Bob Nutting, who just done a great job and his whole team and obviously uh, Neil Huntington. But to watch what's happened here, this is an absolutely beautiful park, and it's been enhanced. The clubhouse, the workout facilities, you just go right along. There's so much here that has been better. And you, and you watch all the, um, the especially we, we spent a, a little time with the uh, development program. Wow, that is amazing. Now you see why these, these athletes are, are in better condition than they've ever been. And they, what they have done to improve here and You've been to Pirate City, Sai, you've seen what they've done. And, and you've been around long enough, as have we, to know how things used to be. That's exactly right. And I, what I love about what uh, Bob Nutting and his group have done is make it a family event. This is totally family. That's it hard to left and off the wall. And you really do feel for now A.J. Shugel because he had two outs. He got the pop up to right. And Stetson Alley not able to make the play. Guy winds up going to third base and he scores on the double to left by Rutledge. I hope Frank Cooney lets me come back next time. I mean, well, they're, they're scoring off me. That, that doesn't usually happen. There, <laughs> yeah, th there is a, uh, you know, so much superstition in baseball. We, uh, Sometimes we'll have we just had uh, Neil Huntington up in the booth for an inning and you know these the, nobody likes to sit in the booth and watch you know the in this case the Pirates either not score offensively or their pitcher have a rough outing. Not that I'm competitive uh, but, but not I'm competitive. Yeah. Well, we won't we won't blame Cy Holzer for that. We'll uh, we'll blame the wind and the conditions here. Uh, so how about the pitcher that uh, is surprising everybody. 
How do you Juan Nicasio, like yeah. Juan Nicasio, yeah. He's been outstanding. I, I was fortunate enough to be working the game where he went the four innings and struck out 10, and, and that's as dominating a performance as I've seen uh, in spring training. And um, you know, the guy, the, the velocity, the movement on the fastball, the, the breaking ball he was throwing, it didn't matter if he missed with location. Uh, he just, uh, and it was the Orioles' A lineup. I mean, it was most of their starting guys. And boy, he made them all, I think, I think three or maybe four balls were put into play the, the entire four innings. And you know, they were all shaking their heads heading back to the dugout. It, it, it's pretty been. It's been pretty impressive to me. The surprise of the camp. Mm -hmm. How good Boy, Neil has really. He's he's so pleased. So Brownie, for you, what's been the real highlight of the spring this time? Well, aside from Nicasio, uh, for, yeah. People, I, I say this. I'm I'm not getting on Pedro Alvarez when I say I think John Jaso has really committed to yeah. play first base. Yeah. He, he he wants to be a pirate, as Clint right. Hurdle says. Right. And I've loved watching the work that he's put into it. And I think yeah. he's going to be a pretty decent one. Now, certainly John knows. Better than I, if he's going to, you know, if he has what it takes. I think he's athletic enough, and as again, Clint likes to say, has the want to, to be a good first baseman. Mm -hmm. So I like watching that. Yeah, uh, for me, it's a matter of the reps. Unfortunately for John, this spring, yeah, he's worked on things. So I've heard a, a tremendous amount of work off the field, like in the backfield. He hasn't had those many that many plays. Uh, to where he had to throw the ball, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's handled every ground ball with easy and with with ease, and, and, and he's handled throws. And but he hasn't had to make many throws. Uh, the double play ball or, or the guy taking off running, um, he did have that in his first game. But you know, he needs more reps, bunt plays, all those sorts of things, and to get I think truly comfortable. Uh, all right, Cy, we'll bring Cy back here as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Pirates trail 4-2. Pirates Spring Training Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by McDonald's All Day Breakfast. Breakfast has been liberated by Kenny Ross, just ask a neighbor, and by UPMC, life-changing medicine. Let's go Bucks! 4-2 Red Sox heading to the bottom of the seventh inning here at McKechnie Field. In Bradenton, Florida winding down another spring training, as John said earlier, Feels like it's the fastest spring ever. Just flew by. Here is Pedro Florimon, who moved to short in the top of this inning. Florimon 0 for 2. And we're with Cy Holzer, president of PNC Bank, talking about the 2016 edition of the Bucks. Rob Wirt is now pitching for Boston. And there's an element uh, for Pedro Florimon. Uh, that he brings to the table. We're talking about the makeup. You, you said you couldn't get anything out of 
Frank Coonley in terms of what that final yeah. roster would look like. We tried to get something out of Neil Huntington a couple of innings ago on the air. Uh, but, you know, when you construct this line, this lineup and the roster, Florimone brings an element to the table, the speed, so Clint Hurdle could use him as a pinch runner, and the defense, the solid defense. Well, so he's, he's, he's in a horse race down to two players, probably. Yes. This is going to be one of them. It seems like uh, Florimone and Cole Figueroa, and here, speaking of the non-roster invitee, he's at the plate now. And interestingly enough, uh, Florimone is probably impressed more with the bat this yes. spring than with the glove, and, and, and you know, that was why he was here last year was because of the glove. I mean, he played a great shortstop and was good everywhere he went, outfield, wherever. But he has had some struggles defensively, but uh, amazing, especially driving in the runs, mm -hmm. you know, leading the team with the 12 RBI. And takes off. And he's in there. And he's better defensively. <laughs> he's doing some good things offensively. It's funny. Yeah. That, that's been kind of a curious thing this spring because he has been a guy who's made it to the big leagues almost solely on his glove work. Florimon, who spent only what, 24 games with the Pirates last year and had a couple of hits and 23 at bats, won a game winning triple. But it, this is a career 199 hitter in the major leagues over parts of five seasons. So it, not his bat. That has gotten him to the major leagues. It's been his glove. And you know what's what's funny is because anytime you come to camp and you, you think about you're competing for a job, we're competing for a job, and so you always think, oh, you look at the numbers. Well, what's he doing with the bat? You know, we're, we're, for certain guys, it's defensively, and what can you do defensively? And that's why you'll see so many guys move around. Michael Morse in the outfield, and Jason Rogers, uh, first and third, and you know we've seen Figueroa in the outfield as well as every you know infield spot but first base and so that's part of it too it isn't just what you do with the bat but what, what value you bring with 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 the glove as well. What is surprising me today and it shouldn't be surprised but it's much more interesting is how much data is being collected on everything they do down to how, how many drops of sweat they had yeah. on an 80 degree day. It, it, it is remarkable. Yeah, that, that's almost not an exaggeration. Uh, it is truly remarkable. Uh, all facets of we this operation. We spent time with the development uh, uh, manager. And his whole view is that we're, we're not here to have people lose weight, get weight. It's what is best to sustain the energy level. How many people work out before the game? How many people after the game? I mean, it was just on and on and on about what it takes today to be a professional athlete, be the best at what they do, and 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 respond better than anybody else can respond. It's remarkable. Yeah. They are really. Uh, they have been uh, under Frank Coonley, Bob Nutting, Neil Huntington. Uh, you know, ahead of the curve because you're starting to see other teams seeming like they're following. Uh, right. Where for for years it was the other way around. Did you go to Pirate City today? I didn't get there. No, we, we came a little late, so I just uh, I didn't get. That's the first time I haven't been there for a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's, <laughs> that's an amazing operation too. I didn't realize it goes 360 days a year. That yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and this time of year, there's an army of kids over there, and I don't think people realize until you get over there and see the, the everything that's going on and. Uh, and how do you keep track of all of it? <laughs> it's right. impressive. And, and and I know you could talk to Frank and he'll give you information on everybody down there. He keeps yeah. tabs on the minor leaguers as much as well as anybody. In the air to left and that wind playing some tricks, but the catch made and Florimon going to advance to third. Danny Mars made the catch and left. And then Florimon tagged and moved up. 90 feet and again that's kind of an element that he has that speed yeah you know a lot of times with a ball hit the left you're going to go halfway um, just because it's rare that you can advance on a, on a routine fly ball to left but with the wind and everything else like that uh, and you never know what can happen but Florimon was on the bag and then he was just reading it and he didn't take anything for granted and he started off the bag when he made the catch. He's recognized that he slipped and realized that he could move up the 90 feet. And Jay Hay can make it a one run game. Size, we get ready for opening day on Sunday. Uh, yeah, thanks to, to PNC Park and now a contending team. The Pirates drew almost two and a half million people yeah. last year. I, I think that just is 
remarkable. I still go back to that October 1st game. Yeah, the Louis. wild card game. The wild card game. I just never, I, I haven't gotten over that being one of the greatest baseball games I've ever been to. But you know what, what I really like, first of all, I love the cohesiveness of the manager team. Neil, Clint, uh, Bob Nutting, Coonley, Huntington. I mean, it, it is, it is. you can just see it. All their assistant coaches, everybody friendly, everybody pulling in one direction. And, and the, the second thing that is so apparent is that people now trust. They trust Neil. Now, they're not sure what everybody they're bringing up is the best, but they trust Neil. That's very clear. I mean, the public, they trust Clint. That's very clear. And they love, obviously, our pitching coach. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a phenomenon. And the, the other coaches likewise. So that part for Pittsburgh is, is really Pittsburgh. You see it in each one of the professional teams, but I'm here and I'm seeing it firsthand, like how great that is. In the past, you would sit there and people would be mumbling and grumbling about the record. You yeah. know, it, it's kind of just like, oh, hum, who cares? Yeah. I mean, everybody knows this is a good club and, uh, and that they will be competing for a division title again and likely to be in the postseason. And, um, boy, how, how things have changed. In the last that is true. Years. It used to be during the years of losing where you would place so much hope on the spring training right. record, right. you'd almost hold on to that and hope that they were a little bit better than 500 down here. Right. Whereas the wins and losses are truly meaningless uh, and based on the fact that this is going to be another contending team, this Pirates club. But there isn't the, the hue and cry. Right like we used to have, and, and now we're talking baseball. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody has an opinion on who's best and who's isn't, and did the Pirates make all the great decisions? Well, we, and there's this trust, and, and you say, well, let's see what happens. I'm seeing a number of the sportscasters say the same thing. How about this? You like seeing that. Okay. Andrew McCutcheon just crushed his sixth home run of the spring over the boardwalk. At least I was able to score a run. 4-4 four, four ball game. You know, it's nice to see him healthy, too. Yes. Oh, last spring, nursing that knee along. Six homers for Andrew McCutcheon this spring. And yeah, he, it's all over the ballpark. It's down the right field line, and uh, the ball is not carrying very well here, but that's a fastball up and in, and you know, he's keeping an eye on it because he doesn't know what the wind's doing, but um, he hit that one extremely well, making it look easy. How about his image and reputation nationally now? Oh, yeah. He's like the poster child for baseball. Yeah, sure. Another look from this angle. See where that ball lands. Oh, oh, it bounced on the back. That screen bounced back. And there's not many hitters that can hit that pitch. Um, a fastball up and in, a funky right-hander. They got throwing out there right now. It's kind of hard to pick up for a lot of guys. And uh, he just flicks it out there like he knew it was coming. Yes, yeah, I we, we were on the uh, radio side a couple of weeks ago and uh, with Dan Zangrilli, our uh, flagship station, and he asked us who our pick to click was this year. And I think, John, did you say Marte? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said McCutcheon. And mm -hmm. I know that. Of course, how can you not pick Andrew McCutcheon? But I think McCutcheon is looking to have the best year of his career. I mean, better than the MVP year he had a few years ago. Well, he's a, just a natural leader. I mean, he just absolutely, and I think the way he went about signing his contract was as first class as anybody has ever done. Even people questioned why he was, you know, why he was so generous for that. But you look at our outfield, I mean, we've got an incredible outfield. We've got a terrific uh, a group of relief pitchers. We've got a pretty solid infield. I mean, we have a couple question marks. And to, to watch how Kutch really does present himself. I was fortunate. I was invited to go to see when he became player of the year. Mm. And he was so absolutely first class, first rate. And, uh, that's a nice tribute to the team, to the management, and to the fact the city of Pittsburgh has so embraced him. He gets it, doesn't he? He sure does. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when you have an athlete like that, that gets it and understands how important it is not only of course to be a leader in the clubhouse but in the community it's sort of like you brownie you get it you know and you're, you're a leader well and i don't you know I, I don't know so well. i don't know that i'd uh, but I, I appreciate that i yeah. very kind of you and you're but, humble uh, even though now you, that i am now you that would I maybe am. not be able to be humble you're <laughs> humble right. 
it's difficult for me. It's as it natural is. for John, yeah. but for you, that's it's right. A it is different. tough. Do my best, but it is so true about Andrew that he he, but, he but, gets it, and and the people, the community, just love him. And I really, on a serious note, your, your broadcast, of course, now that you know there are a team that's contending at all times, it's so upbeat now, and I'm sure that had to be a long drought there for a bit. But to be able to do this night after night and generate the excitement you guys do, I really give you all the credit in the world. It's it's a, it's a great talent. Well, thanks. It's a, and it is a lot of fun. Oh, man, what a play there by Mike Miller, a youngster trying to show off to the Red Sox management. Cy, Brownie, we'll thanks see you so on much. Sunday. I really appreciate it, John. Thanks so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. You know I love this every time. President of PNC Bank, Cy Holzer, with us. 4-4 ball game. You guys are the greatest. Okay. <laughs> Do you know how many people, Doc, have been at, pleading with us? Please get Doc Emmerich back on. Oh, no. Oh, yes, yeah, it well, is true. It is fun to sit here with you and to watch a home run. Yeah. Now, about that. He's two, three quarters away to the to the uh, cycle. Am I right? Yes, that's yeah. correct. Yes, Good. yes. Doc Emmerich, an HL voice on NBC, joins us. Uh, of course, you know his story. What a big Pirates fan he is. And uh, gracious enough to spend some time with us because we, we talked to him at the beginning of the spring and now as we wind down able to discuss guys like Andrew McCutcheon who had his sixth home run of the spring five homers in his last nine games now. He really looks locked in doesn't he. He does and. and Pablo Sandoval. And a drive one. Toward the track Marte. The question I want to ask you is I was in Chicago before a Blackhawks game and I had the game on and that home run that he hit over in Sarasota. Oh, is it still going. It just absolutely hammered it. That was a bomb. That was absolutely a bomb. hammered it. Uh, he has been, had some impressive home. Runs. It's only spring yeah. but it's still fun. That was one of the furthest balls yeah. I've ever seen anybody hit uh, down here at least at that ballpark especially. I mean that thing just kept going. Danny Mars. One of the minor leaguers up. And uh, Andrew McCutcheon, uh, a much different spring than a year ago when he had to nurse that knee and his at bats came very end of the spring. And uh, he never wanted to admit that uh, it was you know, playing a role in his slow start, but you have to believe that it did. He is obviously our McDonald's player of the game already. As Doc Emmerich just said, a triple shy of the cycle, wouldn't that be something for a spring training game? Well, we all remember where we were that day that we saw him sort of hunched over at second base here at McKegney Field and then 
he walked off and then he went down the right field line to the clubhouse and you just wondered how much was walking with him. Mm -hmm. But that's just me as a fan. You just you're always skeptical. Say, oh, no, what happened here? Right. Absolutely. Just you just can't afford to, uh, to lose a guy like that as Shugel takes care of Danny Mars. So the word got passed on, by the way. Olchek and uh, McGuire say hello to both of you. And uh, Olchek seems to have something going with you about horses. Is that true? Not uh, with me. Oh, he doesn't? No, okay. I'm not well, the horseman. He did, he did want me to say specifically hello to you, because I remember the first time you showed up in our booth at Madison Square Garden about three, four years ago. Yeah. And I sort of nudged Eddie, and I said, <laughs> so, he, so he introduced me. <laughs> Little did you know that a short time later you'd be playing for That's John right. Wayner at a fantasy camp. Yeah, exactly right. How about that? Um, actually, this ball go foul. Um, one guy that's here with MLB. Uh, Dan Plesak. He's yeah. a horse guy. Yeah, he's, he's he doesn't horse. have those horses anymore, but he is big time. I, I wonder if he and Eddie O have, have got, they must have because they've got some Chicago ties. So I'm sure Dan Plesak and Edso have... Uh, discussed horses in the past but how about those Gwinnies though doc going great and you know there are two teams that are really hot in the east right now and they're the same two that when we you and and uh, and rock and I talked two weeks ago mm -hmm. were the hot ones Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and they're going to meet on the final day of the season plus a game in Pittsburgh on the, in the final week which will be fun too There's and oh! it doesn't look as critical to Pittsburgh's survival as it did two weeks ago but it's still critical to Philadelphia's. Mm -hmm, sure. And so those games will amount to something. They'll be critical and important. And we love them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and a diving stop, boy, Pedro Florimon. If he has been on the bubble and, and this game meant anything, he's, uh, he's got a real good shot of heading north with this club. Doc Emmerich joining us. Spring is in the air. And with Cast is presented by the authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. 4-4 ball game. UPMC scoreboard going to the bottom of the eighth. And here is Stetson Alley. Again, I saw Alley misplay a ball in right with that Tough wind. The former second round pick of the Pirates as a pitcher. 6'2, 230. Orlando, Florida native. Six years ago, drafted as a pitcher. 
I learned something new again today, but I, this is all old stuff to you guys, but I learn something new every day. When you know nothing, you're always learning. <laughs> I didn't realize that the, there are not <laughs> names on the backs of some players for a reason. No, I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. Minor leaguers over from Pirate City. And the high socks. The high socks is also something that a uh, pirate uh, management implemented several years ago. So when you play the minor leagues of the Pirates organization, that is how you wear your uniform. Really? Yeah. Two ways to tell a guy is over from Pirate City. No name on the back and the high stockings. So it's not anything Scott Bonnet did himself. No, Bones, though the uniform part, I'm sure Bones is involved. Pirates clubhouse manager and Pat Haggerty over at Pirate City. Boy, the work those guys put in the Endless. month of March. Oh, hit hard, but stabbed. Pirate Spring Training Baseball is live with the MLB.com at Bat app. Stay connected on the all spring with radio broadcast, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Thank he you. is he is unbelievable. You, you always give a you always you always set me up beautifully, and that's why. I always like coming on with you because you're never going to let me embarrass myself more than I'm inclined to do in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. He is, uh, as, as I said, after he did his first half inning on radio, took the headset off. I said to Doc Emmerich, it is so unfair, so unfair that you could be as smooth as good. I mean, I understand you're, you're you know, the best hockey announcer of all time. And to come in here and just be as smooth and as good as you were in a half inning of radio, I, I just, it's, it's phenomenal. I had, I it is had, unbelievable. I had so much help. From the two of you. Talk about humble. No, no, I had so much help going in because you guys were so easy to work with. Jeez. And I told Brownie everything I got in the clubhouse, and he made sure I didn't forget it because sometimes that's a problem. Well, then the, the preparation, you know, just a real pro, and so much fun to have Doc with us. Uh, we, are, we are fortunate that we get a chance to watch him on NBC call hockey games, but then to have him uh, here with us uh, through much of the month of March and rooting on his buckos. Here's a guy who uh, has a great story, Doc. Uh, Matt Joyce signed a non-roster free agent contract, a minor league deal. I saw that. I was happy for him, but I didn't know exactly why until I started to hear some more from you. And, and signed relatively late, uh, middle of February. It's a lot of sleepless nights, isn't mm -hmm. it? And a guy who was really in the middle of the Tampa Bay Rays lineup a handful of years ago, an all-star in 2011, and has fallen on hard times the last couple of years. Maybe one of those guys that hasn't been completely healthy. Maybe his health is back and getting an opportunity and knows that he's made the club. So that's really the, the fun part of spring training. J-O-Y-C-E, it's right on his back. Mm -hmm. You know he's in. Yeah, and trades places with someone who uh, does not have a name on the back. Minor league player. We'll pinch run for him. And I'm sure you've been following the Jacob Stalling story. His dad named the head basketball coach at the University of Pittsburgh the other day. Longtime Vanderbilt coach. And lo and behold, he hits a home run yesterday in Tampa. Jacob Stallings. I saw that game only went five. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. I, I saw that game only went five. Uh, was that because of the rain? It was. Because we sure had some oh, here. Oh, did we? Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised they got five in. Yeah, that was um, something else. Uh, it's been so beautiful all spring training long, and then that was a massive rain. I believe that's Elvis Escobar at first ah, base, by the way. Indeed. Uh, Elvis Escobar, pinch running for Matt Joyce. So he is a minor leaguer and, and therefore not on the 40 man. Stallings will begin the year in the minor leagues, but he's on the 40 man roster, so he's got the name on the back and still in camp. It'll be interesting to see how they divide up the catching at AAA this year. And how much of a role Jacob Stallings will play at Indy. 
and hope that Diaz is okay. Yes. He's back out there sooner than later, later with uh, some discomfort. Elbow discomfort for Elias Diaz. They're not going to let him throw for a while, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. And just hope again that it's nothing that would cost him significant playing time in the season. Because you know, last year they were trying to divide time with him and Tony Sanchez at Indy. And they were hoping that uh, he was going to get a lot of at-bats this summer. And Jacob Stallings has just been impressive. Because anything he does behind the plate and, and at the plate, Right, John? Yeah, it just fits in. I mean, you, you notice certain guys that just come out and, and you don't notice anything about them other than th they're playing um, the game the way it's supposed to be played. They, they, they don't look out of place. And, and for a guy a lot of Pittsburgh Pirate fans don't or didn't know a whole lot about before this camp, I certainly noticed that, that you know, he's a big kid. Uh, he handles the pitching staff well. He's solid. Uh, defensively, offensively, he's handled the bat well, and grinding out at bats. And apparently, in the winter, really tried to help his dad with all the, how about the review of the uh, coaching uh, for Vanderbilt. I mean, very, very much involved. Yeah, apparently, uh, the tracks how they're scoring, yeah. how their defense gives up points, and, and in what plays they're running, and I mean, uh, deep stuff. Yeah. Not just a casual fan for dad, Kevin Stallings. His son Jacob now reaches first, and here is Pedro Florimon, who had the bunt hit in the seventh. And the uh, Pirates RBI leader this spring. With a dozen. Getting down to decision time on him. Sounds like Pretty it. Close. Uh, we had uh, Neil Huntington in earlier during this ball game and it, it, it sounds like they pretty much know management who the 25 will be but they want to wait almost to the last possible minute in case of something catastrophic somebody gets hurt uh, they still have to tell the players they want to tell the players apparently after the game about the starting rotation who's in we don't get a vote no Okay. No, nope, we don't. <laughs> uh, that uh, that guy that struck out ten out of fourteen was it o uh, Orioles? He'd get my vote. The one, Juan de Casio. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. He'd get my vote. If you had a vote, he'd be in the That's rotation. <laughs> he'd start against the Cardinals, maybe he'd, one of those three games. He'd be that high. He'd be pretty close to that high. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. He's had a great okay. camp, yeah, hasn't he? Has. he? Yes, he has. He has that. Now that guy gets a vote. Ray Searage. And he should. Yeah. His counts for 1.8. <laughs> right? That's right. It's not two, but it's almost. That's right. He's so good. And Florimon goes down swinging. It's something he has also done a lot of, along with a dozen RBIs. He's also punched out 14 times. In 43 at bats this spring. Well, you guys don't have to react to this. I'm just a fan, but I'm hearing, in in my sense and in people I talk to, that it's either the guy who just struck out or this guy. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, but that's what it sounds like. I'm along to pass along rumors. That's no, all. It, <laughs> it, and, and it makes sense, Doc, because they're they're kind of similar players. Mm -hmm. Now, Flory Moon's a switch hitter. Cole Figueroa at the plate now is a left-handed oh. batter. Uh, the Difference, I would guess. I don't recall. Did Florimone play any outfield, John? Um, he has in the past. I yeah. don't remember him Not playing this spring, a whole lot this spring. But yeah. they've had Figueroa play some left field, third, short, second. So they're, I, I guess, you know, Florimone has the big league experience. Oh, wow, look what I found. Comebacker. Pirates strand a couple. Doc Emmerich with us. The Pirates and the Sox tied at four. Check out the fresh new look on McDonald's McPick.
If that were a speed sign, I think I'd probably be pulled over by now. <laughs> it's, oh, it is. It's just a little faded is all. Okay. I didn't understand. Fly ball to right. One pitch, one out. Elvis Escobar out in right now. And yeah, they uh, new logo this year in Florida and in Arizona fading away. As we are heading down the home stretch, one more game tomorrow in Port Charlotte for the Grapefruit League, and then the exhibition game in Indianapolis against the Reds on Saturday. Jim Fuller, the new Pirates pitcher. Who uh, has quietly done great work this spring. His numbers last year, 440 ERA and 43 innings pitched. That was between um, Midland and Nashville, but so far this spring, uh, just under nine innings, eight and two thirds innings for Jim Fuller, covering uh, this being his ninth appearance, just one run allowed. He hasn't walked anybody. He has struck out seven. Chopper, six three, two thirds of the way to a one two three inning, and that number is going to get even better. The wait is almost over. The Pirates open their 2016 season this Sunday at PNC Park. See the Buccos host the Evil Cardinals in their season opener on Root Sports starting at noon with a special one-hour pregame presented by W.B. Mason. Those Evil Cardinals. We will have it on in our booth in Chicago, I am assured, by Eddie Olchek. Oh, he, he the Cubs you. aren't playing, so he's going to give me the monitor. Well, that's, what, do you, what do you do uh, when the Cubs and the Pirates are playing and not against each other? You fight over that monitor? No, he it, it's his building, so he gets it. <laughs> I have to do the usual iPhone thing. Okay, well, oh, whatever, I hear, whatever I you got to do. I hear you guys a lot, though. And it is fun, and I know you're tired of me saying it, but I count well, on you heavily all year long, and you always deliver. It's always fun. Well, that goes both ways, especially when those Winnies are in the playoffs, and we're listening to you and Edso. And they're, to me, and John speaks to that. John's a huge Penguin fan. There's, there's nothing better. It is so much fun. Yep. You know, watching them in the playoffs is one thing, but to hear you calling it with Eddie Olchick, that's the best. Kind of you to say that. You're true. really spoiled in Pittsburgh with a lot of great announcers, too, and in all the sports for that matter. It is a, um, it, it, like when the playoff run ends, it's so depressing. I mean, you keep going. You go till the end. But obviously, fans in so many different cities, when it, when, when they're eliminated, it, it just, because it is so exciting. Um, I hate to see it end. Would All you? right, now you have to compute what his ERA is now. It's, <laughs> it's pretty good. It's a one. An even one. Head to the bottom.
In the latest edition of Inside Penguins Hockey, Mike Sullivan reflects on his early days at Boston University as a player. Phil Kessel discusses his father's athletic background and much more. Inside Penguins Hockey tomorrow after postgame on Root Sports. Courtesy Doc Emmerich enjoying the finale here at McKechnie. Josh Harrison, some of the starters staying in the game the entire nine. This is a first for uh, Josh Harrison and Andrew McCutcheon playing the entire game. Yeah, I hope the outfield is playing McCutcheon when he comes up where they are right now. Yeah. Because if he gets yeah. one passed, we might be seeing a uh, cycle. That would be fun. Oh, it would. To end the uh, preseason with McCutcheon hitting for the cycle. 7,054 here, over 106,000 fans, second highest season attendance behind only last year in this beautiful ballpark. I would like to see him hit a gap or just to see if he would actually try for three. Yeah, it would be fun, it really would, fun to ask him. It would be interesting yeah. to see. I mean, and I think it would almost have to be the right center. I don't think left center. It's doable. It's a short ballpark. Bucks and Pucks Sunday doubleheader. Opening day, Pirates Cardinals, the hated Cardinals, and then uh, the Pens and the hated Flyers. Ooh. What a doubleheader. That's nice. a nice one. Yeah. yeah. Now it's uh, it gets busier for you coming up this yeah. year. The hockey playoffs start about the middle of the month, right? Right. The uh, first game is the 13th, and uh, NBC is really understanding of the fact that I like to do a lot of work at playoff time, and and they lightened up the schedule uh, during the winter time so that I can do things like this. And so I should mention they have a Wednesday night rivalry tonight in Philly. Line to right. Keep my card. <laughs> it's Washington and Philly. But, yeah, it, it, it makes it a lot more uh, reasonable of a schedule for a guy that's approaching 70. And I still like burrowing in and going right to the end of the playoffs. So they've, they've been very, very good to me. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. Have you ever called a cycle? Uh, a pirate cycle. Yeah, let's I put think it, it was Jason Kendall in 2000. Ah, yeah. Daryl okay. Ward. Daryl Ward? Daryl Ward, what year that would have been? That was, um, I think, since 2000. I, I, I oh, believe. Ward's was most recent, huh? I believe so. Now, see, I would have gotten that wrong. I, I would have guessed Kendall. Oh! Uh, uh, gotcha. Like that. Well, it was an awful call. <laughs> Did you see it? I, I don't know if I've ever, I, I don't think I've ever seen McCutcheon give an umpire a look like that. <laughs> Same place as the yeah. other one. Yeah. Catch and looking back at the rookie umpire, Roberto Marino. I'm bringing the professionalism of this crew down markedly here. With, <laughs> uh, so you're saying right center would be the place to go. The right center would be the place to go for him to hit a triple. Or he can always do this. He can always hit one over the fence and just miss home plate. <laughs> 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 That's the easy yeah. way to Very do it. Very good. Most of the folks will leave thinking it's a walk off homer. All right, I'll help me. You know, two one's a good pitch to hit, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, so so. It depends on if the guy wants to throw it over the plate or not. That pitch was not. Um, you know, interesting enough, I always thought thought like um, if you were a left a right handed batter facing a left handed pitcher, a two one count was almost always a change up count because you th you're thinking you're getting a fastball because he doesn't want to go three one. He throws you that change up and. You roll it over to the left side. Now he'll reach base anyway for a four straight time. A one out walk. So after flying out in the first, hard single to left, double to right in the sixth, and the home run over the boardwalk in the seventh. And that will be his day. He says goodbye to the folks at McKechnie for a year.
Florida native. Grew up in the central part of the state. Gives way to a minor league pinch runner. Now Jason Rogers. Anderson Feliz pinch running at first base for Andrew McCutcheon. Jason Rogers has played the entire game and haven't gotten him out. RBI single in the first, three straight walks. In, in case this game uh, isn't won here in the bottom of the ninth, I, I think doubtful, unless Fuller goes out for another inning, it's, it's doubtful we'll go beyond nine. Yeah. Not many teams go beyond nine no. anymore. Seeing more and more ties. Especially you think this late. How do you like the three on three overtime? I like it a lot. And so far, the coaches haven't figured out any way to slow it down. Mm, There's well. nothing you can do. It's just helter skelter. <laughs> and, you know, when we had out of the first lockout, we did a whole bunch of new rules. And then after one year, the coaches kind of figured out a few things on how to keep their jobs by keeping things <laughs> defensive. And I don't sense that that's going to happen from this year to next. Oh, so it's a, it's a keeper. And I think the Players Association loves it, and, mm. and that's important too. And it'll undoubtedly be used in the All-Star game start to finish like happened in Nashville this year too. Mm. We come up with ideas every once in a while as a league, and, and you never know if there are unintended consequences, but I haven't sensed any of these. This has just all been very positive. Now, the other night, uh, I think it was the Penguin game, they were in overtime, and I thought we might be seeing the first time in NHL history where there's a four-on-three overtime. Because mm. <laughs> it, it was under a minute before a whistle to where they could, mm. you know, go back to three-on-three. Three. Right. Well, Sid did a great deflection there in, in New York, didn't he? Yeah, that was pretty Finished impressive. Finished it off. And he even, I mean, he looks faster oh, all yeah. of a sudden. I mean, he looked a little sluggish early the first half of the season, but... Man, they are flying. They are fun to watch again. Speaking of flying, it'd sort of be nice to see one in right center, like you said. Sure. And yeah, let uh, this, uh, that would make the rest of it academic, where we're going to see Fuller again, and you'd have to compute a new uh, ERA <laughs> for him. There's no one warming up in the uh, Red Sox bullpen, and for that matter, nothing happening in the, peng uh, in the Penguins. Well, not in theirs, no. but none in the Pirates either. It would be fun to watch this uh, young Anderson Felice try and score on a gap shot from Rogers. Because we, we've said, said this so many times through the course of this spring and every spring that uh, as oftentimes meaningless as the games themselves are, and even to a degree, some of these players that have already made the club just getting their work and for a guy like Anderson Felice it's a big deal. Be out of play. Felice who played last year for the Lancaster Barnstormers Lancaster Pennsylvania Independent League the Atlantic League and he played for former Red Sox Butch Hobson wow. in really? Lancaster PA Anderson Felice. 22 years old. Oh. Looks like he wants to go. He wants to go too, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we should get him another. <laughs> One with a P on it, Doc, maybe? Yeah, I think he's he's not really decided yet. He just took the hat off, or she did. Two and two on Rogers in the bottom of the ninth inning. Now they're warming somebody up now. Well, well that could mean that they want to be careful with uh, Kyle Martin, who's on the mound currently. Or maybe they decided they are going to try and play another inning. Well, Martin does have uh, has thrown 38 pitches. There he goes. 
And ball four. So two on for Starling Marte. For Rogers, four straight walks. Yeah. It's kind of like the cycle. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, a pinch runner. What team Clemente say when you came off the field that way? Good eye, good eye. Yeah. Good eye. Right? Yep. Were you team Clemente? Yeah. Very proud to be. Wow. Had, now, yeah. Wainer was the manager. Who yes, else? Yes, he was. Anybody else help? Just yeah. John. No, we had. Um, hey, come on. Grant Jackson? Yeah, oh. it was Grant. Yeah. Okay. That year it was Grant Jackson. Yep. And I think he told the story earlier, Doc. That you guys had a shot to play in the championship game, fantasy camp. Is that correct? We did. And not to blame an umpire's call, but we did. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Boy. we did. It was, mm. it was one of those things where they thought the game should be over before we did, and uh, it was a playoff berth, and I don't think they understood that. Mm. But they're uh, they're not bad people. They just were that day. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, it's so competitive. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. It is. It, uh, well, it matters. Yeah. You know, it matters out there. You put in a week. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with the cash you laid out. You've had a great time, but you've competed between the lines. You go at each mm. other, and you just hate to see the guys take it away from you. Well, so that's it's been four years. I'm still vindictive. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think is neat is at the end of the week when you, you play three inning games against all the campers. The, the 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 alumni do and, and it doesn't matter who it is you know they, they all can still play mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who it is and it, and it cracks me up to see like you know the scores at the end of them you know and and, and i think it opens up everybody's eyes as to you know how good all these you know, former pirate players are how good they were. I mean, it, it, it was. It's it, and it's such a neat experience. Uh, my my first fantasy camp, like Maz still played, Verdon still played, um, you know, and it was a treat for me, mm. you know, to sit there and and uh, and, and to be among them. And um, but it, it, it it's it, it's a hysterical time, and everybody should do it if they get an opportunity to do it. Everybody should do it because yeah. it, it it is a great time. Steve Blast and Tacovi. Uh, Teak and Steve, they, they make it work, and, and they make it hilarious, and they make it fun. Two and one. They make you proud to wear the uniform. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, of course, as fans, we want to do that anyway. But it's a vicarious experience for us just to be around you guys. And then to get to play ball like we did years, in my case, years before, and do that for a week. I wouldn't trade it for anything except eh, for Marte to get one between the outfielders now, and then you guys could be wrapping it up on a positive note here. Yeah, that would be fun, too. Man, that's going to be a squibber. And a double play. And now the question, does this game go extras? The umpires will give us an indication. They're they're headed down yep. the right field line. What does that mean? It ends in a tie. Okay. Sister kisser. Yep. <laughs> For the Pirates uh, end up with a a tie against the Red Sox. Their second tie game. And Rock, uh, our final telecast. One more game on Pirates.com tomorrow from Port Charlotte. What do you think? And, and by the way, but before we say goodbye, I want to make sure we thank this crew. We, we did a dozen games here, and they were fabulous. So thanks to all the guys and gals who helped put this production on. Frank Coonley, uh, Trevor Gooby, uh, Bob Nutting, all the folks at Root Sports and the Pirates for helping us uh, bring you Pirates baseball down here in Florida. But uh, you, again, most importantly, the important guys in your team are healthy. Yeah, that, that's huge. And, and, you know, you got Polanco back out there today after missing a handful of games. Andrew McCutcheon, he's locked in. He wants the season to start tomorrow, the way he's yeah. swinging the bat. Jay Hay uh, has had a, a nice spring and, and, and playing as hard as ever. Um, you know, you just sit there and you, 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 you expect the pitching staff, the starters, to be ready to go. I mean, they, they haven't been great, but they've gotten their work in, and you, you know that they're going to turn it up a notch when the season starts, and, and um, you know, they'll be good to go. Fun spring. Doc, what a treat. This was a lot of fun for me, and I wish you guys well and the team well, and we'll be watching. Uh, Doc be fun Emmerich for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. And stick around. We've got the postgame show coming up in just a moment. Pirates baseball spring training 2016 comes to an end. 
here at historic McKechnie Field in Bradenton, Florida. Bucks will play for real on Sunday against the St. Louis Cardinals. But as we said, please stay with us. More to come. Our post-game show is coming up next.